hello, 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 and welcome back once again, YouTube, or should I say welcome for the very first time, as this is going to be the first new video uploaded to my new channel, Insecure Gaming. This is Manny, and I am incredibly excited to bring you guys this Let's Play, primarily because, if all goes as planned, this is going to be the, uh, this is going to be uploaded on August 6th. 2017, which is actually going to mark the four-year anniversary of the first video that I recorded and uploaded to YouTube back on my original channel, uh, which was an episode of The Walking Dead 400 Days. Uh, I was thinking of doing some more Walking Dead videos, but I decided against it and decided to upload this and one other video uh, on sort of the anniversary day of the channel. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to start with this is because one of my consistent watchers and the person who I would consider one of my true fans has been asking me to play this game for a very long time, and in truth, I've been personally excited to play it for a long time. Uh, partially because this is made by Frictional Games, who are the original developers of Amnesia The Dark Descent, which I have done um, one video of. <laughs> Didn't really get very far in it because that game is scary as hell. And also because I have actually seen other YouTubers play and complete this game, most notably Markiplier, and I don't remember a whole lot of what goes on in it, specifically the ending and those parts, um, but I know that the story has a lot to do kind of with the mind and psychology and sort of what it means to be human and all that cool sort of combination of uh, the hard sciences and things like psychology and philosophy and that kind of thing, which has always been a sort of combination of topics that's been really interesting to me. And I'm also really excited to bring this to you guys because I finally have a new recording set up. So hopefully this one sounds a lot better and you can you guys can actually really get a better idea of what my voice actually sounds like instead of the sort of nasally nonsense that you've been getting off of my headset mic uh, in the past, I don't know, every single video that I've done for my channel. So uh, now I'm using a Samson microphone and I've got a nice professional mic stand and pop filter and everything so you guys won't hear all of the, all of the background nonsense. Hopefully it's not going to be picking up my air conditioning unit or anything like that and uh, hopefully it's just going to be a better experience audio wise for all of you guys and I'm going to look into doing sort of more audio processing to make sure that the levels are correct and things like that and potentially do some more actual editing uh, of the uh, actual videos in the future. I'm still kind of learning my way around various video editing programs and you know it can be difficult to find free ones that are good because I don't have a hundred plus dollars to throw at Adobe to get After Effects or Lightroom or whatever the program they use for it is. Adobe Premiere, I think, is another one. Anyway, whatever. It's like three fucking minutes into this video and I haven't started the game yet, so let's fucking do this. Uh, yes, I've, I've had a save started because I was recording it earlier just to sort of do some audio level testing and kind of play through the beginning of the game a little bit just to make sure I knew where I was going because, you know, it's... It's kind of a good judgment of the experience you can expect as a new player to see somebody else kind of diddling around and trying to figure shit out, but at the same time, I don't know that that's necessarily super entertaining. So I try to strike a good balance between oh, that in that I want to know what's going on in the beginning of the game so I'm not puttering around during the boring stuff. Not to say necessarily that any part of this game is boring, but it is a little bit slow to start. Um, it's not quite Actually, like Amnesia, where you get you thrust into the action right Sorry. away. Please don't make this weird. So this is sort of the no, opening cutscene. Like the main character, Simon, is in a car with this woman, Ashley. Who's David Why is there never enough time? Why is there never enough time? Boosh! And that was a car accident. And you could see that down in the bottom right corner, there was sort of that little icon of like a pulsing brain, which I guess is the autosave icon. Yeah, I'm up. So it's got pretty much the same um, interface uh, as Amnesia did, the sort of point and click and everything is just done via interacting with your hand. So I'm really excited to play this game. And honestly, I really hope that I can get through the like difficult and scary parts to actually finish it because the story is 
super fucking cool, and I like it a lot, and it's been lauded by quite a lot of people as a really, really good successor to Amnesia, which is generally considered one of the best horror games ever, and uh, I would certainly agree with that. Um, so, right now I'm sending an email to remind oh, one of my coworkers that I need the day off because I'm going to this appointment because my brain is bleeding, um, after a, a car accident. And I can pick up these little guys and rotate them around. Whoops. Get well soon. Love, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Alright, so let's see here. So I'm looking for a tracer fluid that the doctor told me to take. Uh, because it will help their machine trace the uh, damage in my brain. So during the scan, it will be able to properly identify the parts of my brain that are all fucked up. I could have sworn I remembered where the tracer fluid was, but now I'm forgetting again. This is exactly kind of thing, exactly the kind of thing I wanted to avoid uh, when I was gonna fucking pre-record it. Oh come on. It's not in the fridge. It's in a drawer somewhere. Is it this drawer? Nope. This drawer? Nope. This drawer? Nope. Son of a bitch. I could have sworn it was in one of these. Nope. And I'm pretty sure I already checked those, didn't I? Oh, bathroom? There it is. Down the hatch, baby. Glug, 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 glug. Feels like milk, but the taste looks like sucking out a penny. Copperish, like human blood. Two, Simon Jarrett. So I live in Toronto, Ontario, apparently. Yay for Canadians. Um. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm heading to an appointment to have my brain scanned to sort of help ascertain the continued damage after being in a uh, potentially near-fatal car accident. Kavfifi. Next station is Osgood. Clara Oswin Oswald. Thumbs up if you get that reference. Jesse, the Grimoire, why is he a tomato with glasses and a mustache? Jesse, is that a beat? I think that's a beat. Thanks. I should be able to come to the store after the scan. Don't sweat it. I got Matt. Chris helped me out. Maddie from SNL? Ah, guess you didn't hear. He's coming in full time. Work in the comic section. That's Ashley's job. Yeah. Well. Forget it. So that was a dream I was having about the car crash that presumably. Uh, left me with serious brain damage and left Ashley, uh, who was presumably Simon's girlfriend or ex-girlfriend or whatever, um, left her dead, hence why they need somebody to replace Ashley's job at the comic store that Simon works at. Arriving at St. Patrick. So that was a little scene of one of his co-workers saying, hey, good luck at the thing, and we got it covered as far as working goes, so don't worry about it, and hopefully you don't die. Yay. And it's all dark and spooky in here. Hello? Luckily Dr. all Mushi? the light switches are a nice bright blue. Where is everyone? I thought this place would be busy. And so... See, this is the kind of stuff I already know to do. Not allowed to repeat the code in the emails or texts, but I'll leave a note. Uh, it's the code to the door that I need to get in through. And I already know that it's in this little notebook in here. And the code is 2501. Yay. See, up, same door opening and closing thing. Hold shift while moving to run, which normally in a horror game, when they tell you that, means you're gonna need to run soon. What's up, bruh? Oh, hi. Didn't hear you come in. Simon Jarrett, right? Dr. You look Mucci. creepy as hell. Uh, just Mr. Munchy, but I'm working on it. Actually, you're helping me right now. Is this part of your thesis work? Yeah. It's a study I'm doing with my colleague, Paul Berg. 
We hope to design a gentle way to work with brain reconstruction to help people like you. Oh, did you, uh, people with Dane brain image. Tracer fluid? Yes. Yes, I did. Great. Well, we can start whenever you're ready. <laughs> Alright, let's fucking do this, baby. Sit me down in this chair. What, what? Brain. Oh yeah, baby, scam my brain. Scam my sexy, sexy brain. Uh, yeah. Canada, Munchie. Born 1988, July 16th. Right. Last neurograph. Wow, this guy's younger than I am. Good. All files in order. Will this hurt? It's just a scan. It'll hurt about as much as getting your picture taken. Indians thought cameras would steal their souls. That's so. Well, let's hope they're wrong. <laughs> Ready? And that's, uh, that's a little bit of foreshadowing right there. Sort of. Quasi foreshadowing, I suppose I would call it. I don't need a text right now. What happened? Hello? Mr. Muchi? Did something go wrong? So yeah, now I'm just in a dark room. I, I'm not supposed to put myself in stressful situations. This is kind of stressing me out. Yeah, it would stress me the hell out too because hey. it's crazy dark in here. Anyone? Oh boy. Um this isn't where I was. This is not where I was at all. Ugh. Fuck your window. So yeah, I already know to do that kind of shit. Ugh. Fuck your pressure locked doors. Bathroom. Broken mirror. Gotta have the turlets. Cali air humidifier. Huh. That's some creepy robo death juice of some kind. Data buffer available. What the hell does that mean? So, some shit went down here, evidently, and they had to seal off a lot of these doors. That's what these things are. Pneumatic seals. Machine handgar. A95 worker, version 3. Haimatsu. Huh. Those are weird computer tumors. Computers. Why am I glitching out just looking at you? That's super weird. Hey you. Can you talk? Can you talk like the others? Why are you like Huh? Why is it listed as breathing if it's a robot?
So presumably she shut that robot down and that's... The fuck was that? So there used to be a wall there and now there's not. That doesn't seem like a good thing. So this is where I came in, out of this fucking chair right here. Can't get back in it. Can't do anything with the computer right now. Service console? Okay, what do I need to do over here? Insert Omni tool. Well, whatever that is, I don't have it, because I don't have anything right now. So this is already pretty fucking creepy. Uh, just seemed to be in some sort of a abandoned technology facility in God knows where. Uh, and something just busted open this fucking wall. Making quite a ruckus in the process. And see, this is the thing about games like this, with the atmosphere, and that's one thing I talk about a lot when it comes to horror games, is atmosphere, is that I've been through this part already, and it's still giving me the fucking willies. So, yep, I knew that was going to happen, and it still made me jump a little bit. I know I need to go in there. It's not anything I can interact with. Oh boy. So of course early on in the game it tells you to, how to run and it tells you how to crouch because those are really the two first things you need to know how to do in most horror games. Uh, let's see here. Swipe Omni Tool. Okay, so I'm not going anywhere until I get that Omni Tool. And so it's already introduced to me the idea that there's going to be a stealth element because it told me that while I'm crouched, I will move more quietly. I will also move more slowly, but in the interest of things not finding me, I really do need to be quiet. Things like doors opening are most likely loud enough to attract the attention of whatever it is I'm going to have to avoid. And Omni Tool. The Omni Tool is an advanced interface for accessing, managing, contro and controlling computerized systems. The onboard intelligence includes an open set of behaviors and protocols to enable the user to automate routine actions through basic logical charts. Over time, the Omni Tool automatically adapts its programs to cover subconscious behavior to optimize work and minimize user error. The Omni Tool has a short range signal useful for basic or automated functions such as opening doors. While performing complex operations, the Omni Tool should be physically connected to a workstation or terminal. To upgrade your device, simply slide operators into the main or the auxiliary slot. The main slot has a standard C11-21 to 21 connector, which allows the user to fit most market Cortex chips into the Omni tool. Note that introducing an additional AI will override the onboard intelligence. Cool. So it's a little handheld computer schmadeely. Sh schmadoodly. Schmadiddly doddly. Anything else in here that's useful? Also, what the hell was that noise? Okay, so I have the Omni tool now, so presumably I want to go back to uh, that terminal in that room that I woke up in, because I needed the Omni tool to access that. Okay, starting to really creep me out now. I don't know how effective closing the door is going to be at keeping anything out, considering I broke the fucking window. Pathos 2. AI helper, Jane.
Remote access denied, servers offline, main power suspended. 13 days remaining in emergency systems. Subject Simon Jarrett, 28XY terminal scan, authorization David Munchie, 2015 version 1, Toronto. So I don't have a tool chip or a Cortex chip. But I unlocked the toolbox right here. Height 7. Updating security ciphers. Okay. So presumably that's going to be giving me the ability to open, unlock doors with it. Level 3 security access, apparently. Alright, so now this is accessible. Pilot seat number three, Upsilon. Okay, well that's just a bunch of gibberish. Construct network, Upsilon offline, no pilot, pilot, Upsilon offline. Semkin reported uncharacteristic levels of nausea after the mission. Diagnostics show a spice, spike of electromagnetism surrounding the pilot helmet, which was believed to be the cause of Semkin's symptoms. No indication to what created this anomaly. The pilot system has become increasingly unreliable. Everyone who's been using it the last couple of months has been having headaches and spells of nausea. Last week, Gavin was knocked out for 30 hours when trying to direct a healer cluster. Helper cluster. This is not acceptable. We will figure this out, but for the time being, I'm shutting down the usage of the pilot system. This means you will have to do some more heavy lifting, performing the operations through programming or physical labor. No one is happy about this, so don't bother complaining. Jane Adams, Chief Factor. Alright. So I guess now I need to head back to that door that told me I needed an Omni tool to open it. And I'm relatively certain, if I remember correctly, this being where the first chase happens. the first sort of stealth section. So I'm going to remain crouched while I'm over here. Please get me the flip out of here. Shit, where was that door? Oh god, it was that way, wasn't it? I don't know what the hell that was, but I'm not excited about it. It's going to find me here, isn't it? So I'm presuming whatever this thing is, I'm going to need to stay the hell away from it. So I will probably die. That 
was loud. What the fuck? Can I shut this door behind me? No? Cool. That doesn't make me happy. So, we're underwater. Ah. Uh, okay. Getting some serious Subnautica vibes, obviously. Oh, I can't walk too far away from it or I lose the buffer, I guess. Oh boy, psychotic machines. That's a phrase I fucking love to hear. She was drawing the fish, I guess? Cool, so... We're underwater. That doesn't add a, an additional, like, 75 degrees of creepiness to it. I'll probably have mentioned this in my Subnautica playthrough if I've uploaded one of those yet, but I won't have, so what the hell am I talking about? But I'll probably repeat this in my Subnautica playthrough, um, or my Subnautica video, whatever. But uh, percentage-wise, we have actually explored more of near-Earth space than we have of Earth's oceans. And um, I found that really interesting when I learned that. Robo vagina squelch. What was that? So I think these things are like healing stations and also save points. I think. Oh, good vents. Nothing bad ever happens in vents in horror scenarios. Oh, cool, and I can't go back. Whoa, that skipped like crazy. Nope, can't go back. Great. Well, I hope whatever that was did indeed save. Because I'm probably going to have to cut this video pretty soon. Yeah, this isn't super creepy or anything. That didn't sound like a good. That sounded like a very bad. God, it's not here in the vents, is it? This is legitimately the furthest I've been in this game right now. Station control. Okay, where does the other one lead? I just want to make sure I'm exploring everything properly. So as far as I can tell from what the game has given me, I'm in an underwater power plant that has been overrun with psychotic machines. Uh, presumably some sort of robot with uh, AI that's become corrupted. Okay, this is just a different exit that I won't be able to open. Oh, boy. Well, considering this video is already going on a half an hour at this point, I think I'm going to cut it before going out this door. Um, I hope I've gotten a good enough range of sort of 
uh, different audio levels to make sure that everything is recording properly. Um, new mic always means that I'm going to need to tweak the levels a little bit, so this may actually end up just being an audio test episode. Uh, I certainly hope that that's not the case. I really hope that this one is good enough quality that it's going to go up on the channel. So if it is, thank you everybody so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'm definitely definitely going to continue to play this and make more episodes of it and um, there's going to be another episode on my channel up today or not another episode a different video up today of uh, FTL faster than light which was the first indie game that I played on my original channel so I thought that seemed fitting for that to be the first indie game appreciation video that I upload to my new channel so that one should most likely be significantly longer than half an hour and I hope you guys enjoy that one as well so yes definitely stay tuned to my channel for more videos of Soma coming soon and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the new channel and I'm really excited to see where it's gonna go. Thank you.